Good evening, everyone. It's Jonathan Harris here from Coho, and I'm delighted today to be joined by Steve Bormack from Dwell Haven. Uh, Steve and I have been yep. in touch um, a little bit over the last couple of weeks. Um, we share a common uh, connection in that we're both from the pool area. Um, and Steve is just getting started with his um, HMO and landlord journey. So I really wanted to bring him on today to understand why that is, um, what drew him to Coho, what his plans are, um, and, and what life might look like for him going forward um, as he enters the HMO space. So Steve, over to you, um, you know, how's it going? Yeah, um, pretty well, thanks, Jonathan. Um, so yeah, a bit about my background, if you like, um, first of all. So I've, um, as you know, I work in um, housing design um, on the sort of technical and building regulations side of things in my full-time day job. Um, we, I work for a sort of small but very busy design consultancy and we produce um, building regulations, technical drawings and technical advice and support for lots of the major national house builders such as Barrett Homes, Persimmon. Okay. Um, we mainly work on housing um, but we also do the occasional sort of care home as well and commercial development but housing is our sort of main bread and butter really so so very yeah. very obvious interest and in that was sparked in the, in the property world um and i know you're just getting started in in the hmo um world so so why why hmos um and sort of co-living and shared living why not the more classic uh, single let route um you know what what prompted that decision well initially what i only it was around about um late last year i decided i wanted to start getting involved in property investing for my future and I want to I mean I've been doing the job I do now for 20 odd years and I'm looking to transition away from it into something a bit more well working for myself and um a bit more of a passive income sort of thing to use that word <laughs> yeah um and initially that was my initial strategy to get into a single let's um I thought I you know buy a couple of flats here and there and kick on from there. But then when, when I started um, crunching the numbers and learning a little bit more about investing and subscribing to um, property sort of um, education, YouTube channels and things and websites, started sort of getting my eyes opened a bit more to HMOs really. And um, it, what sort of, um, with most people, I think people are petrified of them the rules and regulations and stuff like that yeah. everyone says there's, they're a lot more involved um so i sort of started learning that it's not actually that bad once you've got it set up and running and it's a hell of a lot more profitable and stable than just a single let because obviously you've got that multiple income stream so you know you may have a five bed hmo and even if it's 80 70 70 80 percent full you're, you've still got an income stream coming in whereas if you've got if you've got a single let obviously you know you've got that you've got those longer void periods between people moving in and out that's, and that's really interesting in. you touched on that um sort of fear and trepidation going into the hmo space because yeah. it's something we hear so often people there's this uh, common persona and common conception really around HMOs that they're very tricky and difficult to manage and, and they're just a nightmare. But actually, the more people that we speak to, the more we realize that actually overcoming that can be boiled down into just a, a few key fixes. And that's systemizing it, it's being on top yep. of it, everything. So I guess that's kind of what led you to uh, to exploring um, property management software and, and eventually coming to Coho. And um, I'd love for the people listening for, for you to just Tell them a little bit more about what it is specifically about Coho that solves your um, sort of requirements and what you're hoping to achieve as you scale your business from the ground up. Yeah, well, I, I played about with a few, um, you know, there's, obviously there's quite a few competitors on the market and um, Coho just um, seemed to be the, the slickest, if I can put it that way, um, okay, so, um, software. And I often use the word simplest and I, I never want simple to detract from from how complex and involved it is but i think when it comes to that user experience that simplicity is so key yeah yeah that's it and um 
I like the way that you're constantly um, updating as well with the YouTube channel. Every time there's a new feature, there's a, you know it's featured on the YouTube channel, and um, it's, it's just really it's just really easy to keep up with. To be honest, um, it's not one... it's not it's not over it's not overly complicated. Um, it's yeah, it's slick. It looks good. Um, and it's affordable. Definitely, it definitely is affordable. That's that's been a key consideration of ours. Um, you know, you should always release software and and platforms that that are not a hindrance. They should always add value and and not just financial value, but actually make a difference to the lives of those who are using um, the software. So it obviously forms the foundation of um, what you're looking to do. What what's the the grand plan? You know, how how large would you look to take your HMO Empire, are you, are you saying we're going to cap it at well, five or ten properties, or is it just a matter of suck it and see? Initially, I think my thoughts are that the nice number would be between 10 and 15. Okay. Um, but, you know, you, you never know. I mean, the, the more I think from speaking to lots of people who I know who, who already own lots, massive portfolios, you know, the more you get, the easier it becomes. So... Definitely. Who knows? But 15, 15 would be between ten and fifteen would be nice for me. Yeah. Um, would you I do it that... all around all around your current area? Would you look to to sort of stretch out further and wider, or or just focus? Yeah, on I, so ideally, I'd like to keep it um, fairly on my doorstep. Well, as as you know, I live in Pool, so we've got quite a big. Um, I mean, it's a combined area now. The three councils have combined Bournemouth, Christchurch, and Pool. Um, so would refer to it as the BCP area. So I would um, like to keep it in the BCP area, but I've also been looking um, a little bit further afield. Southampton is the next obvious choice because it's, it's such fun. a um, it's such a busy city. Um, you know, lots of people work there, lots of students there. Yeah. Um, although I am looking to hopefully stay within um, professional tenants rather than student lets. But, um, you know... You never know. It's a different ball game. Um, and, and one thing that lots of, um, not just property businesses, but generally businesses at the moment are really having to focus in on is the experiential side of things. You know, it's no longer good enough just providing a service and, and feeling that the person using that service should be so lucky to, to have it. Um, that experiential thing and, and the shift in it yeah. becoming a choice to, to live in shared living rather than just a stopgap before property ownership. How, how do you envisage addressing that um, as you scale your own business? You know, how, how much does that feature in your planning, in your uh, motivation, um, and, and just generally what you're looking to do? Yeah, a major part of it, actually, it's a major part of my sort of marketing strategy and appeal is, um, you know, just simple things like providing things like Netflix and um, those small services and just making sure everything is really sort of nice, modern to live in, uh, well maintained. You know, you don't have to spend a lot of money to um, to, to provide some of these things. Um, you know, there's so many sort of slum, sort of landlord type. Um, I probably shouldn't use that word, slum landlord. But <laughs> when when you look on spare room and um, sites like that, you look at some of the um, rooms available and they're on there for ages and ages and you can just see why and you think you know a little bit of furnishing a little lick of paint but it doesn't take much really to you know provide a nice comfortable environment um it, it really appealing it's, environment it's just I, i've always thought if i was able to go into it I would, i'd always think would i want to live there and you know that's such a simple sort of acid or litmus test and just say would i live in that room i'm advertising and if the answer was no, then, then I wouldn't feel comfortable putting it up. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then one, one question I always like to ask people is, um, you know, life takes its, its sort of turns and its, its segues and stuff. If you could give some advice to your 12 or 13 year old self, um, probably not knowing at all the property world of summer you would end up, what advice would you give your younger self, knowing what you know now? Um, is there anything you do differently or are you of the mind that actually life... Um, life is about learning and and where you are now is a result of that how, how would you um respond to that did you say excluding property <laughs> i think yeah. you've uh, oh, you ruined, you've ruined my answer now then <laughs> i was i was going to say um, yeah just buy property as soon as you can or um invest in it um when i was quite young i was offered the chance to buy somewhere um 
I was nearly 18. I was offered a chance to buy a really large flat and um, I was actually renting it at the time. And um, I look back now and it's one of the biggest regrets I've had of not buying it. I, I, didn't get on the, I didn't get a foot on the property ladder till I was nearly 30. And um, I thought, it's just, you know, if I'd have bought that, then it was peanuts as well. The landlord was desperate to get rid of it, who I was renting it from. Um, yeah, so, I mean, you know. Your life. But I, I guess yeah. that's part of the problem. You know, we, we have these discussions now with the sort of slightly maturer hats on and, and having experienced this stuff. But but you're not taught this as, as a child going through the education system. And, um, you know, there's, there's no guidance, I don't feel, for, for younger people on you know, on this idea of passive income or, or investment um, mm. to produce income. There's, you know, focus on, you know, basics, but I feel more needs to be done to to advise, you know, younger people on the benefits of that, on the benefits of compounding interest and, and property investments and and everything that yeah, goes along with Because so many people get to a point and think, oh yeah, I fancy a bit of property investing. And there's, there's not much background that they've had um, other than training courses, which, which are great. I just think generally as a as a country and as a sort of institutional setup educationally, we could we could do a lot more um, to point people in that direction. Yeah. I mean, most people you see these posts on Facebook all the time asking a similar question to what you've just said. And everyone said, you know, finance, you know, how to open a bank account and all these simple things are not taught in school, yeah. how to pay bills and things, you know, and you know, property, obviously, it's the it's the, the major thing. It's the it's the one major thing for most people. You know, we've all got to live somewhere. Definitely. Yeah. And just to close up, then, um, if you had one message for your future tenants, um, if your sort of elevator pitch or your USP, why why should a tenant look to take up a tenancy in one of the the dwell haven um, bedrooms or units? Um, because. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be looked after. Um, I like. I'm a bit of a regulation and um, a, a regulation nerd, if you like. Um, so I'm always sort of looking into you know the latest uh, legislation, regulations. So everything will be everything will be up to standard, um, clean. Um, any problems addressed promptly. Um, and I'm also willing to listen to what they if they want any changes. Um, if they have any suggestions to make it a better environment for them, a better, more comfortable space. Um, and yeah, that's it really. Sounds great. Sounds very much in line with our values here as well. So we're so excited to help you. Um, and we see you very much as a partner. Um, we don't really have clients or customers, you know, everything about what we do is, is in conjunction with, with helping you scale and grow. So I'm, I'm super excited to be on your journey with you um, and really looking forward to seeing where it takes you. Thank you.